In Britain, Prime Minister Liz Truss announced she will drop her plan to cut the tax rate on high-income earners, bring in Hillary Fordwich. Hillary with us this morning. Hillary, does this signal that Liz Truss is maybe on the way out? Well, Stuart, I would actually defer to the bookies and to YouGov poll. About 50% right now of Britons actually say that they think that she might be out by the end of the year. And the bookies, it's gone from 60 to 1 by the end of the year to 4 to 1. But let's just talk about that issue there that you met. Yes, it is. Oof, ouch. But let's just talk about the issue a moment, Stuart. We must remember that, don't forget, Liz Truss has neither a democratic mandate nor a parliamentary mandate. She was not elected by the people. And of course, Boris Johnson, don't forget, he had an 80% there voting public. And he actually broke through that red wall, which was the wall of the Labour Party, the opposition party. She doesn't have that, number one, because she wasn't elected by the people. She was elected just by party members. Secondly, when I mentioned parliamentary mandate, there's about a third of those MPs still are backing Boris Johnson and wish he was still in power. About a third of them wanted her opponent in the final race there, and that was Rishi Sunak. And so she's only left with about a third of parliamentarians, Stuart. She mm. didn't have much of a choice because she wasn't going to be able to get that through Parliament. Now, what was interesting, too, we all saw the international banking community piling on her. Even the IMF weighed in and the Bank of England. We know that Mark Carney isn't exactly a diehard conservative. But Stuart, what's a pity is, I mean, even in Ireland, it's a 40% rate and it was only going to go back to what it was when Blair was in power to 40%. Mm. So what's very sad is for something that was only 2 billion out of this massive package got too much attention. It was the optics. Agreed. That's why make the U-turn. Turmoil in the British government don't like that. Hillary, King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla, they went to Scotland for the first public appearance since the Queen's funeral. How were they received? Actually, Stuart, I will say um, you must remember that this was a place, obviously, we all know where the Queen sadly passed in Balmoral and the Scots came out in force. Likewise, they were received very well. What was very interesting about it, though, there was some booing, and that was particularly... Do a Cameron Walker reported on this on GB News. But the booing was for whom? Not for him, not for the Queen Consort. It was for Nicola Sturgeon, Ooh. the Scottish uh, First Minister. Now, what does that show? I will tell you this, Stuart. When the Queen's casket was going through Scotland, and not a lot of commentators mentioned this, but, Stuart, if you notice carefully, even the tractor drivers in their farms were lining up to watch that casket. This was an outpouring of the Scottish people, and they're demonstrating they want to be part of the union. So they received him well. That's fascinating. Booing uh, the lady who runs Scotland, <laughs> cheering the king. <laughs> Whoa, who would have thought? Uh, Hilary Fordwich, thank you very much for being here. Very informative. Appreciate it. Just do it. Yeah, got it.